Comment, let me know you're watching, okay? Facebook page and log on by my cell phone and I can share this but it's not letting me do it today. Maybe I can. My goodness. I lay on. Okay. Now, uh, I want to talk about uh, our eating habits. Uh, I know many people are overweight, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. my goodness, it's called gluttonous. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. now. Day. <laughs> uh, now, uh, here's the deal. Uh, many people use uh, Acts chapter 10 to, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to explain, in their view, that God has removed the uh the eating law of the bible <laughs> so uh so they make the word of god to uh no uh, effect <laughs> so my goodness what they do and that's found in uh my goodness um mark uh Chapter 7, verse 13. 
making the word of God of none effect through your traditions which you have delivered and many such like things you do. So that means uh, you begin to add and remove things from the Bible. So, uh, but God uh, raises up people like me to debate you. <laughs> My goodness. Now, in uh, Galatians chapter 5, we are told uh, not to touch anything unclean, you know. And uh, we obey that law uh, every day of the week, uh, you know. Like when we uh, use a shovel to pick up a dead animal off the side of the road. You don't go uh, pick it up with your hands. You use a shovel. So, uh, you know, you don't eat dogs. I hope not. I don't. <laughs> but in some countries they do. <laughs> but it's sin. And the reason why it uh, causes uh, sickness <laughs> so and diseases. Uh, you know, catfish, uh, it causes diabetes. Uh, shrimp, same thing, diabetes. Uh, swine, uh, orc, uh, it's got uh, a very high level of saturated fat in it. You can clog your arteries up. So it's going to cause heart attacks and stuff. So, and also to all them foods uh, that God calls unclean, uh, they have a very high bacteria level. So, therefore, uh, you know, your immune system is going to be weak. So, that means uh, you're going to be sick all the time. So, uh, anyway. My goodness. So let's start, okay? Now, uh, if we start in Acts chapter 10, here's what it says. Okay? Acts chapter 10. Alright. Okay. <clears throat> My goodness. Anyway, now this whole chapter is about, uh, the kingdom about what Jesus did and expanding the gospel to the Gentiles. Plain and simple. Okay? So, uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. And one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. That means he was a Christian man. See? Uh, so, you know, uh, the gospel is for uh, anybody and everybody. It don't matter if you're black, white, brown. Uh, it don't matter. Uh, uh, Asian, no matter. The gospel is for you. Okay? Anybody can join the kingdom. Plain and simple. So, that's what that verse means. Okay, verse 3. Uh, and, you know, his actions matched God's word because he helped the poor. You know, he began to preach about God, you know. Okay, verse 3. He saw in a vision. See, he was spiritual. Had dreams and visions. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked at him, he was afraid and said, Lord, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms, alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges 
with one Simon, a tanner, whose uh, house is by the seaside, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto him, uh, Cornelius, was uh, departed, he called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So, uh, that means uh, this man was spiritual. He knew God. Why? Because God is everywhere. So, and uh, God... And Jesus and the Holy Spirit was trying to expand the gospel. Okay? You know, pour out the Spirit upon all flesh. So, uh, that's what was going on. And God communicates with us through visions, dreams, and with his voice. And angels sometimes appear to us. It's the way God talks. So, God has a plan. He wants everybody to come to the saving knowledge of the truth. He wants you to live a sin-free life. Do your best, you know. Okay, so, and God will give people dreams and visions about you all the time, you know. All right, verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry, and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven open, a certain vessel descending uh, unto him, as it had been great sheet knit at four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise peter kill and eat but peter said no uh, but peter said not so lord for i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not uh, thou common. This was done thrice, uh, thrice, means three times. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. So, now, they stop right there. And then they tell you God has cleansed all food. Eat whatever you want to eat. See, that's a trick of the devil. I'm gonna that's not what that says. Okay, because if when you read on down in the chapter it's gonna tell you what it meant. Okay, God was trying to expand the gospel. Okay, and it tells you. Verse seventeen. So uh now, while Peter doubted in himself what the vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house, and stood before the gate, and called, and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee, arise therefore, and go get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius, the Sertarian, a just man, and one that feareth God, 
and of good report among all the nations of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them and on the morrow Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accomplished him. Accomplished him. So now as we study the whole chapter it explains what the vision uh, meant because after the dream you notice that Peter uh, did not uh, Peter uh, he did not go down and eat swine <laughs> The whole dream was about expanding the gospel to the Gentiles. You know, we're drafted in. Hello. So, now, we got these morons that run around and pervert the word of God. And you need to wise up because you're listening to them. Okay? It's not okay for you to eat swine. Plain and simple. You're not supposed to. Ridiculous. Okay? So, my goodness. And verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. See, the gospel's for everybody right there. Okay, God is no respecter of persons. All right. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Well, hang on. My goodness. I don't I jumped too far in my cell to see. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. My goodness. Yeah, we're jumping too far ahead. <laughs> hallelujah. And uh, that's what people do. They begin to leave out whole verses of the Bible. Ridiculous, huh? They jump around, don't they? Stop jumping around and read the whole chapter. Uh, it opened up your eyes, okay? Now, verse 24. <laughs> And that's what they do. They leave out five or ten verses to prove the point. See? So, let's read verse 24. <laughs> okay. And the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. See, the whole family. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to, is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call anything uncommon or unclean. See, the, the gospel's for everybody. You know, don't judge them. See, that's what the, the dream meant. Therefore uh, came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in a bright uh, clothing, and said, Cornelius, thou prayers is heard, and thine alms, alms are, are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, whom when he cometh shall speak unto thee immediately. Therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore, 
are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? See, so it's all about expanding the gospel. Acts, uh, you know, chapter 10 is all about expanding the gospel. It's about the Holy Spirit being poured on all flesh. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. It's not about God cleansing all food. That is just an example in a dream that the only thing that Peter can understand. See? Now, my goodness. Oh, Leah. <laughs> anyway, so let's continue. All right, and here's, here's the next part. Okay, see? All right. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. See? So the gospel is for everybody. It's about spanning the gospel. That's what Acts chapter 10 is about. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. See? So what do you have to do in order to enter into the kingdom? Work righteousness. See? That's what you have to do to become a child of God. Live God's law. This word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that word I say ye know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Same thing you get. See, that's what they leave out. Have a, a form of God has been denied the power of them. See, a lot of them denominations. Would be whom, uh, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drank with him after he rose from the dead, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and testify that it was he which was ordained of God to be a judge of the quick and dead. To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sins. See, so that's what Acts chapter 10 is all about. It's not about God cleansing food. It's about receiving remissions of sin. When you read the interpretation of the dream, it don't say that, uh, Peter went and uh, slayed a pig and ate it. See, so people add and remove things to the Word of God all the time. They just leave whole chapters out. And therefore, then they get up here and they they make you, uh, you know, confused. That's what they want to do. They want you to uh, die of uh, gluttonous and diabetes and all that kind of stuff. See, they're going to pay a big price for that stuff. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost, see, fell on all of them which heard the word. See, that's how you get the Holy Ghost. You receive the gospel. And they of the circumcision which uh, believeth were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also will pour out the gifts of the Holy Ghost, for they heard and speak with tongues and magnify God. See, and you see that in a lot of these mainline denominations, they deny the Holy Spirit, they deny talking in tongues, so that automatically tells you it's false. See, so you need to stay away from the people, you know, for they heard and speak with new tongues. See, it's evidence of the Holy Spirit and magnify God. Then answered Peter. Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed uh, they him to tarry certain days. 
See, it's plain and simple. See, and, you know, it's a very common thing for these ungodly men to stand up here and preach. And they deny uh, the Son. They try to make him God instead of Son of God. Then they remove talking in tongues. And then they remove the gifts of the Holy Spirit to tell you don't exist no more. You know, you need, need to stay away from the people. And understand that the law of God still exists. The only thing that changed is we do not sacrifice animals no more. Jesus was the last sacrifice. And through him we have direct access to God. Which means if you sin uh, in Walmart, you can uh, automatically repent and turn from wicked ways and receive uh, clean, uh, to be clean. His blood, see. So, my goodness, and that brings you closer to God. So, you know. Anyway, so, uh, that is the correct interpretation of Acts chapter 10. It is not about God making all the food clean. So, you do not go out there and eat skunks. You do not go out there and eat dogs. You do not go out there and eat pigs. You don't go out there and eat squirrels. You know, you the laws of God, you know. Read, uh... Leviticus chapter 11. Live the eating law of the Bible. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you a quick story real quick. Uh, a long time ago, well, a few years ago, uh, I had real high blood pressure. And uh, my insides were messed up and stuff, you know. And uh, I uh, was in there using the bathroom and I started bleeding. And, uh, come to find out, I tore up my insides and, uh, tore up some hemorrhoids from, uh, miss, uh, treating, from, uh, not treating my body the way that I should treat it. So, uh, the doctors couldn't do nothing for me. So I prayed and I said, God, will you heal me? And he said, yes, Mark, but only after you live to eat law of the Bible for two weeks, then I'll come down and I'll heal you. So, I lived to eat law of the Bible for two weeks. Then, uh. You know, I was healed. So, uh, God's very real. But, you know, you got to repent first. Okay? It's rod and it's that. See, the rod comes first. Repentance. Then he, he fixes you. So, God will heal you. But he wants you to live the word of God. So, stop letting them pervert uh, the gospel. Okay? Sin is sin. Okay? Plain and simple. So, uh, now, uh, I'm in the process of trying to build a big gathering hall, so, uh, team up with me and find that link there on my PayPal, uh, to my PayPal account there on my Facebook wall, okay? God bless you, we'll see you later.